We're going to talk about the latest trends in the job postings data, but from a different point of view. We're going to talk about the Indeed Job Postings Index. See, typically we talk about the numbers like non-farm payroll, uh, unemployment numbers are released from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but we also have private sector data. And it calculates, in this case, the index, the Indeed Job Postings Index, the changes in the net number of job postings. It's an index that was created in the year 2020 at a level of 100. When the number goes up, it means there's more job postings out there. When it goes down, there's less. Well, first off, we can see this is the Indeed score, again, starting in the year 2020. Uh, we trended up for quite a while, uh, peaking out around 22. And since then, we've been going to the downside. We're currently at a level of 112.49. Again, on an index that was initially based on 100. What's interesting is that we've declined to levels we have not seen since the recovery from the pandemic in 2021. Certainly not a good sign that there's just that many less job postings out there, job openings. Now, we calculated the average score per month because there's a very seasonal factor when it comes to jobs. And we can see the lowest number of job postings occurs in the summer months. April, May, June. The highest number of postings occurs in the winter months or in the holiday season, January, then November and December. Well, currently we're at October. Logic would dictate that we should see a really good amount of job postings lately. But what we're going to show you, that's actually not the case. In yellow, that's the monthly average. Remember that we have the highest number of job postings towards the end of the year with the holiday shopping season and the lowest in the middle of the summer. The blue line shows us our current Indeed score. And what you'll notice is that the blue line, the Indeed score dropped below its monthly average. And that occurred late last year, late 2023. So for about a year or so now, the Indeed score has been below its monthly average. Obviously, the monthly average changes, but regardless of what whatever month we're in, the job postings this past year are lower than its historical average. Zooming in, we can see again, the yellow line is the monthly average, the blue line is where we are now, and these lines are moving in the opposite direction. We should see an increased number of job postings, October, November, December, peaking out in January. But at best case, we're kind of just trending flat line, so to speak. There's not any more job postings now than there were more or less in June or July, historically the lowest months of the year. And that's kind of a troubling trend. Now we can talk about the different job sectors. There's quite a few different job sectors that are addressed in the Indeed data. You may ask, what are the top 20? Uh, they are... Uh, in order from the top physicians and surgeons, therapy, civil engineering, let us break down what the top 20 or many of the top 20 have in common. Let's see if you can guess. Physicians and surgeons, therapy, personal care and home health, pharmacy, dental, medical technician, veterinary, child care, and nursing. If you were to guess healthcare related, you would be correct. Of the top 20 indeed job sectors, that's the sector's that's a sector that represents the greatest amount of job openings, job postings. They're, most of them are related to the healthcare industry. What about the bottom 20? Well, there's quite a few. What do they have in common? Well, there's one sector in particular, one uh, commonality. It includes uh, fields like administrative assistance, banking and finance, customer service, IT operations, marketing, media and communications, mathematics, information design, and software development. Now we may be taking a little bit of a leap, but these sectors sound like there are all sectors that have really embraced AI, artificial intelligence, customer service, banking and finance, software development. These are all sectors where there's less manpower needed because a lot of this work is being done by AI. Let us know what you think if there's some other commonality as well, but it seems to be a logical conclusion. Well, you may ask, what's the best and worst state to work in as well? Which states have the greatest amount of job openings? The top 10 include Alaska, South Dakota, Montana, North Dakota, West Virginia, Maine, Vermont, Hawaii, Idaho, Wyoming. What about the bottom 10? 
Utah, Illinois, New Jersey, Maryland, Minnesota, Massachusetts, New York, California, Washington, and the District of Columbia. Well, in blue, we have the non-farm payroll number. That's published from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's the monthly number we all know. In red, that's the Indeed score. And what you'll notice is kind of a disturbing trend. They seem to be moving in opposite directions, or at least there's not a very strong correlation. Why is that? There's many reasons why. Don't know exactly. But it would be a lot more comforting if we were to see somewhat of a strong correlation, if we saw one line go up and the other line go up as well. The non-farm payroll numbers actually been getting better and better over the past three or four months, yet the Indeed job score is hovering right near the low. There's really no connection between the two, almost as if the private sector and the public sector numbers are based on much different data. But take a look at the Indeed score again in red compared to the non-farm payroll, but this time the non-farm payroll is not seasonally adjusted. Now, normally when we talk about the headline number, 254,000 jobs or whatever that's created, that's seasonally adjusted. The raw data is what we see here in blue. And there, while again, there's not a perfect or even a, a great correlation, it seems to be much more closely related to the Indeed score. Both lines seem to be moving lower over time. And that brings up the question, the seasonality, the seasonally adjusted figures, maybe that has something to do with the break in the correlation. You see what happens is the Bureau of Labor Statistics and all these other agencies that report the numbers, they take a look at the data and they say, well, you know, when we have predictable patterns where you know, we tend to see more job openings at the end of the year for temporary work or holiday shopping. Well, you know, we're going to smooth out that data so we don't see big spikes at the end of the year. That's seasonal adjustments. But lately, it seems as though the seasonal adjustments, they've actually kind of been over adjusted. We just spoke about this the other day in terms of last week's non-farm payroll number. Now you can see that number nine that represents September. And the seasonal adjustment in this case brought the number down by 72,000 jobs. Okay, well, we would expect maybe September, October to be a, there, for there to be a jump in the data and the seasonal adjustments have to back it off. But what we've talked about in this analysis the other day is that that minus 72 is the lowest seasonal adjustment we've ever had. And this data goes back to the 1940s. So essentially, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they're applying less of a seasonal adjustment than ever before, you know, almost to make the data look better than it is. I think that you'll find what we discovered in our discussion here to be quite interesting. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.